Hi guys and welcome back to week 8 here of the Reading Roundup. My name is James and today we're going to go ahead and take a look back at all the latest news, reviews and roundups of everything regarding Reading FC. Now, today we're going to go ahead and discuss Reading's embarrassing performance against Rotherham. We'll go ahead and talk about our superb victory over Blackburn. We'll have a look at West Brom being linked with a move for Lucas Schwell. We'll talk about Barbara Rahman potentially returning to the club on a permanent basis. And finally, we'll go ahead and look towards the Middlesbrough game that's coming up this Saturday. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Rotherham first. Obviously, we have better performances. Um, listen, we were very, very, very poor. It was a very bad game from Reading. And Rotherham were very good as well. You have to give Rotherham their credit and you have to give Rotherham their dues. I thought Rotherham were very good as well as Reading were very bad. Listen, defensively, this was awful from Reading, uh, and we did not deserve to get anything out of this game at all. Uh, look, Joe Lumley, I praised him in his first few games this season. I did think in the Blackpool game, maybe he could have got a hand onto the goal uh, a little bit easier, but look, he was just poor. He was very, very poor. He lost his head, and he did not get back into the game at all. Look. We talk about poor goalkeeping performances. It's probably one of the worst goalkeeping performances I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, it's just unfortunate. Listen, at the end of the day, we knew what Joe Lumley was going to be coming into the club. And this is the kind of things we potentially might see from him. And look, it's weird that we go from that, from a 4-0 demolishing loss where he just looks awful, to how confident and good he looked against Blackburn and got the backing from the fans and he loved it. Look, it was his mistake for the third goal where he's let the ball go through his legs and then he nearly let them score again when he ran out and just missed the ball completely. It was an open goal for Connor Washington and uh, obviously he was just missed it with the header. And then I think for the fourth goal as well, maybe he could have done a little bit better. I think the defending was very poor as well, but I think he could have done a little bit better there. He ran out for it and just got beat to the ball and they scored an empty net. For me, Tom Mack and Tom Holmes were very poor in this game as well. Did not do good enough did not do good enough at all. I don't really want to dwell on the Rotherham game too much because of how well we played against uh, Blackburn, but I kind of think I do need to still talk about it because we were very, very poor. And I think we played a back four and it kind of showed our limitations of playing a back four with these two centre-backs. Listen, Tom Mack and Tom Holmes, I don't think work well as a pair. When you stick them in a back three with an experienced head, it's a completely different story. But I think it really did go and show the lack of experience that we had in our back line in that game. Midfield was completely overran as well by Rotherham's midfield and it was just, you just got to hold your hands up and say fair play to Rotherham. I think they just played very well. They really did outplay Reading in this game and you just got to hold your hands up and say fair play to them. Listen, we were very poor, 4-0 down in the first half. Luckily, the second half, it was 0-0. But again, that doesn't mean anything because Rotherham weren't really going to be out there looking to score goals and Reading were kind of just on damage limitation at that point. Look, Tom Mack and Tom Holmes weren't good enough. They were very high line that was being played and was just getting beat every single time that they got the ball. Uh, was Rotherham knocking it over the top of the two defenders. Right, now that's out of the way, the poor performance in the bad side. Let's talk about how well we played against Blackburn. It's just such a Jekyll and Hyde performance. Honestly, it's just such a Jekyll and Hyde performance compared to the Rotherham game. It's crazy how we can go from one extreme to another so quickly. Reading played so, so well. It's honestly one of the best performances I've seen Reading have in the last few years. Honestly, I saw on Twitter that there was a thing about saying, oh, what was Reading's best performance? Honestly, the last time Reading played that well was probably the Bournemouth game when we were freeing it up in the first half. Lucas Schwab looked amazing. We all thought we were going up. Um, that performance was probably the last time Reading looked this good. Honestly, the pressing was just brilliant from Reading. From the front, Tom Ince was a star. Pressing the ball, running. He must have ran a marathon in this game. Honestly, the boy did not stop running. And he was just absolutely superb. This is also apparently with a calf issue, which uh, Paul Ince was talking about in the Rotherham interview afterwards, about how players are playing injured right now. He was saying Tom Ince was one of them players that were injured. So if he's playing with a calf injury and running around like that, hats off to him even more. For me, though, the biggest presence in this game and the biggest factor, I think, that helped Reading's performance as well as this great pressing was Loom. Loom was absolutely outstanding. 
He commanded the midfield so well, and he was such a huge presence in front of that defence. Last year, we conceded, what, 89 goals, and I think that was a contribution of the defence and the midfield being poor. Now we've got this big centre midfielder that is just a commanding centre midfielder that just he's just a presence that we've got, and he protects them so much. He's an enforcer, and he's in there just to win the balls, to get these loose balls, to... People were scared to come up against Loom, and that's what I saw against Blackburn, and he was just superb. I hope it's not just a one-time performance. I hope this is what we see going forward from him, but honestly, it was just outstanding in this game. Defensively, Reading was solid as a rock because of Loom, because of going to a back three. It looked, it was just so much better than what we uh, saw in the Rotherham game. Honestly, Loom made such a difference. I speak here in my notes about Tom Ince playing very good as a shadow striker as well, sitting just behind the number nine, playing as that shadow striker, the guy that can run off the defenders, the guy that can run off the striker as well. Just Tom Ince in this central role has been superb. He has never played in a central role in his entire career. His dad sticks him there. He obviously knows what he's doing. Tom Ince has the most points in fantasy football right now uh, for midfielders. In fantasy football for Gaffer, I think it is. Tom Mintz has the most points. The kid's doing somewhat good. He's been great for Reading. When when he ticks, we tick. And he's been great so far this season. Uh, I speak as well here about Tom Mack and Tom Holmes looking very solid with Andy Yeardom as well. Andy Yeardom playing right centre-back in a back three. We've got Holmes in the middle and Tom Mack on the left centre-back. And you see these centre-backs that we have, at the uh, Tom Mack and Yeardom on the wings, kind of almost like, like they're playing more... The, sorry, the centre-backs that are more on the sides. You see them make these driving runs in the midfield and it has such an impact on the whole game because all of a sudden you see Blackburn either just all run towards him and they're all chucked to him. He then passes the ball off to the free midfielder who's able to pass it off more into space to Guinness Walker or to Yeardom, uh, sorry, also Hoylet who's out on the wings. And it had such a massive impact in this Blackburn game. These little driving runs that our centre-backs made and Yeardon was just outstanding in this game. Honestly, he was just a commanding leader for Reading. He was such a big influence, I think, on that defence. And having that experienced head that's going to work. He obviously isn't a centre-back, but him playing centre-back has played very well so far for us. Shane Long won everything in the air as always. He was just absolutely superb. Shane Long just honestly... Getting him back on a free transfer has been outstanding business by Reading so far. I think Shane Long has been brilliant. Lucas Wow came off the bench and scored, but Shane Long really does just play 10 out of 10 games without having to score. He's just been great for us since coming back. Um, Nesta Guinness-Walker had his best game in a Reading shirt as well. Did come off injured, which I was a little bit concerned about, but Nesta, Nesta Guinness-Walker played his best game in a Reading shirt. He looked really good going forward. Really, really good, and I was very happy to see that. Fauna as well played very well. I thought setting up Lucas Wow's goal very well as well. I thought Fauna was great. Just a great performance all round. And I'm really hoping that we can keep the momentum going now because I just really did think it was a fantastic performance by Reading. And it was one of the best performances we've seen in a very long time. The pressing game worked. I thought defensively we were solid. Loom was man of the match and just looked great. Shane Long was just fantastic in the air. Tom Ince runs for England. And I really do think this should be Reading's style of play going forward. It's not going to be every week in, week out we're going to see these type of performances. But I think... As a solid foundation, I think this is how Reading should continue to play because Blackburn couldn't handle it. They could not handle it at all. This is a team that are top of the league. This is a team that just beat West Brom. Couldn't handle it. Ben Brereton Diaz was just in the pocket of Andy Yeardom and he couldn't handle it. He really could not handle it. Obviously, Tom Mack got a goal. Uh, we saw Junior Hoylet score a rocket of a goal. And then we also saw Lucas Wow coming off the bench and scoring. So good to see, again, goals coming from all over the team for Reading. This is something that I really do notice with Reading teams is we get goals all over the pitch. We don't always have this one out and out striker that scores every goal for us. I mean, Lucas Wow did the other season, but that's kind of the only exception I can really think to that rule. So it's good to see goals being shared around the pitch. Right, moving into our next topic now, we're going to talk about that man that we just spoke about, Lucas Joao. So we're going to go ahead and talk about how he has been currently linked to a move to West Brom. Actually came out today. Normally I record these on a Thursday and then release them on a Friday, so kind of glad I didn't do that. Uh, as the big news really is Lucas Joao potentially could be leaving the club. Um, West Brom won him. I don't think he's going to go personally because I can't see why he would go. Mark Bowen spoke about in an interview that the fans love him and the owner doesn't want to sell him and that Reading won't sell Lucas well. 
obviously this West Brom reporter is reporting that potentially he could be going. I don't think Lucas Schwell is going to be off, personally. Just seems like West Brom are just collecting all the best players from the championship, to be honest. They've obviously got Jed Wallace. Uh, they've got John Swift. Uh, Carlin Grant's there. They just seem to just be collecting all these players from the championship that are the best players of each team. And, uh, yeah, that just seems to be the strategy that they're going with at the moment. Um, I don't think Joao's going to be gone, though, personally. I think he's going to stay. So, look, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks we'll come back to this and say, look, Joao's gone. But I think he's going to stay. He's in his last year of his contract. Apparently he likes it at Reading, so can't see him going personally just yet. Moving on to the next topic, then we'll go ahead and talk about the potential rumour of Baba Rahman joining back to the club on a permanent basis. Uh, it's come out this week that Reading are a permanent offer in for the Ghanaian defender. Personally, would like to see him come back as even though he wasn't great last season, I still think he's a class player. I think last year he per played in the back four and I don't think that was great for him personally. I think a back five would be more of the option for him. Listen, West Brom also want him. I don't know why West Brom just want every player that we're linked to or that we have. So we are going to have to fend off competition from them. We're not going to be able to match the wages, though, that West Brom are going to offer. So it really does depend whether or not Baba Rahman wants to return to the club or not. Listen, he seemed to really like the club last year. He seemed to interact with fans on Twitter a lot. And, you know, I think Redden have got the perfect case to try and uh, get him to stay and get in this project that we're building right now. So be interesting to see if Baba Rahman will come to the club. But that is kind of it on that one. Um, just a rumour at the moment that we've made a permanent offer, which is positive signs, it's positive signs. Right, going into our next topic of conversation, then we're going to go ahead and look at the Middlesbrough game. Uh, Chris Wilder's side have yet to win a championship game yet this season, so I think it's going to be an interesting fixture to say the least. I think we're going to be really riding high after our win on Wednesday. And I think we're going to try and play the same way, especially like running at Middlesbrough and really taking the game to them. Middlesbrough played good passing football uh, and on Sunday scored one of the better goals you're going to see it build up play wise uh, all season like it was fantastic from them and look I think it's going to be a really difficult fixture obviously they're yet to win so they're due a win at some point and if they don't win here that's five games without a win for Chris Wilder and the pressure might be starting to build on him very quickly they have conceded eight goals this season which is a main topic of conversation really for this preview They've conceded eight goals. Like, that's a lot of goals to concede inside four games. I know we've conceded six, but I think it's a lot of goals to concede very early on. Obviously, we sp we always talk about how poor our defence is, and obviously last year we had the worst offensive record in England, let alone the league. And look, Middlesbrough have conceded eight goals already this year. That's two a game. That's averaging potentially more than what we did last season. So if they keep that up, you know, it's not going to be a fun ride for them this season, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, listen, one stat that I was very surprised to read was Chris Wilder has won every single game he's played against Reading as a manager. So he's got six wins. So I don't know if that's 100% true. It was in a preview that I read uh, that Chris Wilder has never lost or drawn a game against Reading, has only won. So yeah, not looking forward to that if that is the case. Um, we need to watch out for two players, in my opinion. Isaiah Jones is someone who really does make Middlesbrough tick down that right-hand side playing right wing back for them. I think Big Matt Crooks could be a danger for us as well. Obviously, the set piece wise, he wins everything in the air and uh, obviously punished us last season. And Marcus Force, I think, could be in for a start in this game as well. I think could be one of the first games that he starts for Middlesbrough, their new permanent sign in, who they got from Brentford, uh, the former Brentford striker. Now, in terms of a start in 11, uh, we're going to have to go a little bit different. Uh, we're going to have to have to make a change no matter what, as obviously Joe Lumley is on loan from Middlesbrough, so he'll be unable to play against his parent club. So Dean Bazunis is going to have to step in and go in goal for this game. I think Bazunis is a good goalkeeper, so I'm not really too worried about that massively. So Dean Bazunis will be in goal for this game. I've gone for a back three of Yeardom, Holmes and McIntyre once again. We've then got Junior Hoyler and Nesta Guinness-Walker playing as our wing-backs. Obviously, Guinness-Walker did come off injured uh, at the weekend. Uh, sorry, on Wednesday. So it'll be interesting to see whether it's him playing there or whether we'll go for a Brafer on the right and Hoyler on the left. Um, but I think Guinness-Walker should be in for a shout. He hasn't really said anything about him being out injured. So he would have said something, right, Paul Ince? Uh, we then got for the midfield, Fauna, Loom and Hendrick playing as a midfield three once again. I think... That's just the midfield three we're going to play this season. And it's going to be our long-term plan. Loom looks fantastic. Fauna looks good. And Jeff Hendricks solid. I think he's been solid as well. And finally, up front, I've gone for Shane Long and Tom Mintz once again. I just like the way they t these two play off each other. Middlesbrough play with a back three as well as Reading. And they play with two like 
right back and left backs as the centre backs. So I really do think Shane Long could be a real target for us here in this game. I think using his aerial ability could be really important to Reading in this game. And using Tom Ince is going to be massive as well, running at these players and really forcing them to make the pass early on. Obviously, Lucas Well be in for a shout as well to start this game, scoring on his return. So I've gone for a prediction of 1 all or 2 1 to Reading. I'm leaning more to the wards the 1 all though, as I think. Listen, where Middlesbrough are a quality side and they're going to be a quality side all season. I think, I don't know, we might be able to go ahead and get something out of this game. So tell me in the comment section, guys, what you think the score will be for the Middlesbrough game. Tell me what you thought about the games as well against Rotherham and Blackburn. It'd be interesting to find out your thoughts. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. I will see you tomorrow for the Middlesbrough review. Hopefully, we'll be talking about another three points for Reading as we climb into the playoff places five games into the season. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching week eight of the Reading Roundup. We'll see you in the next one. See ya.